Well, welcome to another uh, episode of MTG Moxbox. Uh, today we have a special episode. Uh, since um, Commander Legends has been out for a while, uh, we were thinking about we can talk about uh, if we, I guess uh, for MTG, if we get assigned to a specific uh, slot, uh, what will be our top two cards? Uh, we noticed there was uh, some <laughs> interesting dialogue from our uh, previous box opening when uh, certain folks who got a particular color, but they don't actually play that color. So we're just trying to uh, think outside the box and say, hey, if you don't play a particular color, you know, what are some other uh, good to have cards besides the chase cards that might be good for particular um, decks out there? So uh, the way we're going to do this today is we're going to shuffle the eight lots uh, and divide it into three piles. And that will be our assignment, and we will talk about uh, the particular cards that we like from each uh, slot. Okay. And uh, I guess to clarify this, we're going to talk about the cards that we want for our own decks, right? Yes. Yeah. Or decks or collection decks purposes. Decks or just, yeah, yeah, in general. I mean, because if I get blue again... Uh, I guess I'll be talking about the same thing. Uh, I mean, we all know what you want. <laughs> oh my gosh, I got blue. <laughs> all right. All right. Uh, so, uh, you want to put the card on the sure. table so you can. I got red, multi, and blue. I got green, colorless, and land. That leaves me with white and black. How come I feel like this is kind of rigged? Because these are almost the colors we play, man. Oh, okay. I play all colors. Huh? <laughs> all right. Oh, all right. So, uh, green. Oh, well, let's go on from the top though. Okay. Green, you want to start first? Yeah, green. So green, I would pick Kamal, Heart of Corsa, as my number one. Oh, good choice. Um, because it's a human druid, and basically it lets my creature to have trample. And I have a green bear deck that needs trample. No, no, I, don't, I don't think it needs any more help that I already have, man. But I think it would be a pretty good fit for your green bear deck, man. I, I think so, guys. So I already have the other Kamal that makes... You know, lands. Is that the one, fist one? One, one, one creatures, yeah. yeah. Uh, I forgot the actual name. Fists of Corsa? Yeah. Yeah. And then... Fists of Kamal? Hey. <laughs> I, no, I don't remember. <laughs> That's no, what I, it's fist one of, of those. Side. Okay. Um, and then my second card for green would be three visits, because I think that will be... That's a really good ramp card. Oh, okay. Um, that was uh, from original from Portal 3 Kingdom, I think. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So, your turn. All right. Red... I picked Najila, the Blade Blossom, because it's a five-color commander and allows you to grow your army bigger each time you attack and give you additional combat phases. And I, if I do uh, end up building her, I might end making it into a red-blue deck and add Sphinx of the Second Sun to see if there's a way to keep looping it. Um, you know, combat phase, then a uh, untap phase type of thing. So this will be a new deck. If I ever build, yeah, it'll be a, probably okay. a soldier tribal. And that yeah. will be your commander. Uh, I, yeah, because she's five colors, so I guess I can fit anything I want in there. Yeah. The second one I'm considering is Hellkite Courser. Uh, just because it when it comes into play, you can bring your commander and put it from sorry, take your commander from your command zone and put it into the battlefield, and then return at the end of the turn. So I can see uh, it being useful uh, somehow. For say a partner commander that I only need that partner to come out you know occasionally to do some sort of a you know use their ability and put it back into command zone when I need it or if there's a way for me to bounce uh, you know Hellkite Courser back to my hand I can keep doing this um, every time because then this way you don't pay the commander tax right uh, I don't think so because you're, you're putting you're putting it into directly from command zone into the battlefield using the Courser's ability not pay, not casting not, right it. yeah okay so I think yeah, it's avoiding the tax. Yep, so those are my two, Najila and Helkai Corsair. All right. All right. White? So for white, uh, my two picks were, uh, the first one is the Chroma's Will. Uh, so there are the five uh, wills um, in Commander Legends, and I was looking through the white one, uh, and it looked really interesting because it almost gives white um, a fighting chance to actually <laughs> kind of win if they can get some kind of an army out because I believe... Is uh, this one it, of the Monarch ones? No, it's one of the ones that grants um, uh, two different sets of abilities. Um, you either choose one, but if you have a commander out, you can choose both. Uh -oh, uh, okay. So I think the first option it gives you a bunch of um, it gives your creatures a bunch of abilities. I think it was like double strike and, and something else. Uh, and then the second ability was I think it was more protection. Um, 
like indestructibility and, and things like, like that. Like a Teferi protection type of thing. Right. So and not Teferi. Was it Teferi? Yeah, Teferi, Teferi, Teferi protection. protection. Yeah. Right. That's yeah. Nice. So if you have you know your commander out, you can basically have an invincible army uh, that double strikes or terrible like that. idea. <laughs> so <laughs> what do you mean a fighting like chance? That's, that's like <laughs> that's terrible that's power. <laughs> Yeah, so I thought that might be an interesting. Um, you did you, know, did you ever draw one from all the uh, you know? I don't we recall. Open? Maybe. Oh, excellent. <laughs> oh, what? <laughs> <laughs> I'll have to check. Damn might it. be seen in the box. Uh, the second one is uh, Slaughter the Strong. So the, <laughs> this is the uh, this is a I think it was a reprint of um of a, a board wipe that is based off of your uh, I think creatures attack or power. Uh, so I, I actually use this in my um, uh, my wall deck, where where all my uh, creatures have uh, pretty much a low power, um, low power but flat so, toughness. Yeah, exactly. So it allows me to wipe usually my opponent's uh, creatures, uh, but protect my own. Oh, that's terrible! That's <laughs> terrible. <All right. laughs> One sided wipe. All right, and that's the, those are my two for uh, white. All right. Next we have Carlos. <laughs> well, obviously the jewel lotus. I mean, come on. <laughs> how original! I, I mean, I was trying not hard, hard not to pick jewel lotus. <laughs> yeah, how could you not? That's true. Um, you get your commander out like super quick on your first turn, basically. You, if, if if that's your thing, and then as a super aggressive deck. But we don't usually play super aggressive decks. But I think it's still nice Bear. to have. It's not that aggressive. It takes two turns. <laughs> Whatever, man. And the uh, second I would pick is Commander's Plate. Oh, okay. Because it's a nice equipment. And uh, basically gives you protection from the color that's not your commander. Usually you're playing against colors that's not your commander's. So I can, yeah, put it on the bear and, uh, you know, be <laughs> invisible for a while. Oh yeah, my it's gosh. Good, good, good in a monocolored deck. Yes. Like that. I think Jewel Lotus is uh, also more suited for a monocolor just because you can't really... That's the three true. mana has to be the same color. Right, right. right. So uh, so the whole time you're just pretty much thinking for your bear deck. Terrible. <laughs> I mean, they both work. <laughs> I'll add them in. All right. Uh, uh, multicolor for you. All right, multi. Uh, I picked Timna the Reaver because... Uh, I pretty much welcome any card draw abilities, and Timna actually works pretty well with this life gaining deck I'm building. So uh, I feel like she's a good fit. Uh, but then the only part that I feel it's kind of uh, worrisome for me is it has to be combat damage uh, for you to uh, to draw a card. You have to do combat damage. Um, so that would be kind of interesting. So Timna has to attack. I think creatures, uh, sorry, to combat damage your opponents oh, receive. I see. Yeah, so it doesn't have to be Timna, but it has to be com- your opponent has to receive combat damage. Gotcha. Yeah. Uh, the next one is, uh, I think it's called AC Tyrant of Gyrus Strait. Oh, terrible. <laughs> terrible. <laughs> Costing cost is a bit high with uh, four colors and a green and a blue, but uh, since it's green, it shouldn't be too much of a problem. And uh, it doesn't just work well for a landfall deck. I think it pretty much works for any green deck that has ramp because uh, whenever you find a land and you put them in play, uh, you know, it triggers its ability. So And it's exploration, sweet. right? Because you can play additional land. Yes. <laughs> so uh, pretty sweet there. Those are my two. Timna and AC. Uh, next we have Black. All right. So for Black, I actually ended up picking uh, two uncommons um, because I was trying to look for you know less popular or lesser known cards. Oh, nice. Uh, so I came up with uh, Demonic Lore. So it was an enchantment for two and a Black. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, you draw three cards, uh, but the drawback to that, because it's black, is because at the beginning of the your end step, you lose two life for each card in your hand. Oh. Uh, so I picked it because I'm working on a demon deck, and it seems like it would kind of fit in, and it fits with the theme of, uh, you know, you know, uh, paying any kind of price to to get ahead, uh, <laughs> just pure evil. Okay, yeah, <laughs> but also because I think Black also started getting um, some enchantment removal cards. I forget it was was it Commander Legends or it might have been Zendikar Rising, but the, I think there were some common cards that. Um, yeah, I think are, it was Zendikar Rising. Yeah, yeah, should probably pull up whatever it is and pull, uh, pull up on the screen in a little bit. But uh, but yeah, so there's ways to get around this drawback. And I believe there's other ways is that, you know, you can also try to donate it to somebody else. 
Oh, After you draw your cards, your oh donation God. deck. <laughs> yes. So again, pure evil. <laughs> just finding interesting ways to work around it. So that that was my first pick. Uh, my second pick was uh, the Kumbash Witches, and I picked that one because. Oh, the playmat. <laughs> yeah, because I, I just really like the artwork of it. And so, <laughs> I, it's actually an interesting ability too, because I think you tap the witches and it does you deal one damage to a target. And then you also have an opponent choose a target to deal one damage to as well. So in a multiplayer game like Commander, you could actually work with an opponent to kind of gang up on... <laughs> <laughs> you on mean uh, encourage yeah. some, some uh, uh, gain up attack, <laughs> I guess? Well, All right, so let me ask you then. If you, since they're both in commons, if it's a rare or mythic, which one would you pick for a black man? Since we're going with uh, our I think it was, it was, it was pretty obvious. Tutor? I was probably going to go with Vampiric Tutor. <laughs> All right. What was your second? Would it be Opposition Agent? Um, I, I feel like Opposition Agent is a bit too mean. Whoa. Uh, wait, wait, wait. wait. Coming from the guy that's pure evil. <laughs> even, even he has Hey, but I got to admit, Opposition Agent wasn't was my top three, but it wasn't my top two. <laughs> it wasn't my top two. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah, I just feel like if there's um, once it's on the board, you everybody be, will yeah, be, be everybody's like targeting gonna be you. against you. So <laughs> it's not. It seems like it's not going to be as good as it, it it could be in a multiplayer game. Maybe on one on one, if you're locking out the opponent, then and that's yeah. one thing. Maybe yeah. because it's an EDH, you only have one. But if it's like standard, you might. Oh you yeah, put like four of them in there. Can't imagine yeah. playing against opposition agent in standard. <laughs> All right. Anything else you want to add? Um, no, I think that's it. All right. All right. Land. For land, I pick um, one of the, I guess, the dual land training center. Um, oh, nice. Red and blue. Mm -hmm. um, that's for my upcoming pirate deck, because I think it's going to be red and blue. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And then the second land that I pick would be Command Beacon, because oh, nice. it's useful that when you're in a pinch, you can sacrifice and put your commander from your hand uh, to the, uh, from, uh, into your hand from the command zone. Mm -hmm. So just in case, you know, they're high casting costs, you can get your commander out that way. Yeah. I, I actually had that on, on my list too because I was saying that it can protect against, uh, what's it, Tevish Sadats? <laughs> oh, the, 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 the minus planeswalker 10, that we drew. Yeah, the <laughs> minus 10 low ability where it puts all everyone's planeswalker, sorry, uh, commander from the command zone into play. Under oh, your... that's actually smart. I didn't yeah, think about so that. So I was like, hey, uh, you're going to trigger that? Uh, <laughs> let, me, let me put it in my hand, you know. Right? Good, good thing you don't have that planeswalker. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Guess back to you for your favorite color. <laughs> All right. You know, don't have to talk much about mana drain, but uh, and I think Cold Preacher is a nice one to talk about. But I think everyone kind of knows about it already. So um, the one I like to talk about is actually uh, Sphinx of the Second Sun, because I feel like the casting cost is high for this one. It's like eight casts, like six colors and six two and blue, blue, two blue. blue. Right? Yeah, yeah, blue blue. Um, honestly, if I draw it, I don't think any of my decks right now can, can fit it in. But again, if I ever build that Najula deck, I can see myself trying to fit uh, this Sphinx into trying to see if there's a way to kind of uh, pull off some uh, um, unlimited looping <laughs> until I beat <laughs> everyone terms. up and uh, win the game, you know? I mean, Blue has so many ways to do that, right? <laughs> <laughs> you don't need to know about it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Is that it? I think that's it. Yeah. All right. So we went through all um, eight slots. Um, I think we still have our um, Commander uh, Commander Legends Draft Booster Pack giveaway. So leave a comment. Let us know if you agree with our picks for each slot. And, or let us know what your top two is for each slot. So uh, leave a comment and get a chance to win a free booster pack. Yeah. Let us know if you like these kind of episodes. We'll plan to do them for all the other sets too yep um, i think we have uh since commander legend is the most recent one which is which is why we decided to start this one we will uh try to go back to uh double masters uh jump start zendikar zendikar rising, zendikar rising. <laughs> and also uh core 21 yeah all right thank you so much thanks for all watching right. thanks for hey everybody uh happy new year hope you guys enjoy uh, this kind of new video we're just trying new ideas and um, see if this is the type of content that you guys like to see uh, without further ado let's pick our winner for this giveaway uh, the first one of 2021 
And the pack goes to... Tim, hey, congratulations. Uh, we'll be sending you a message and asking for your contact information. Um, and I believe after this, we have three more packs from that box to give away. So three more times for you guys. Um, and that's it. Thanks for watching.